Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the King of Armor Destruction, and you guessed it, got an armor video for you today. But first, did you do a workout today? Part of staying healthy is exercising. I did a 30 minute, five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 air squats, and every three minutes, a 45 second plank did that with my wife this morning before coming out here and freezing. That was a good workout. Anyways, folks, this plate you see right here is our large ESAPI Revision E that we tested a little while ago. We shot against a bunch of threats and our M2 AP plus B plus was the only one to make it through. I get asked from time to time to test 5.7 against hard armor or compromised hard armor to see if it can go through. So we have a compromised hard armor plate that we're going to take out to about 45 feet, strap it to our clay briefcase, and we're going to see if 5.7 from an 8 inch barrel can penetrate over, I don't know, 10 or 20 rounds. As mentioned, it's pretty cold outside today. We have our Procono Digital as always. It's about 35 degrees outside. We'll get all this set up and see what we can get out of this test. We've got our plate set up at around 15 feet. If you haven't seen the original video for this, the ESAPI plate is pretty much boron carbide B4C with a polyethylene backer. The backer is thinner than normal because it is in conjunction with plate meant to be used with soft armor behind it as well. We have two loads from 5.7 by 28, which are some of the better performing rounds. This is Elite Ammunition's T6B. It's a 28 grain solid copper prefragmented projectile. This is Black Dragon Fang from Vanguard Outfitters. This is a 34 grain bullet. Our firearm of choice is our Diamondback DBX in 5.7. It has an eight inch barrel. Got a Trigicon MRO up there. I think we'll ro load five rounds of each and we're just gonna shoot randomly on the plate and see if we get a penetration the chronograph was reading I think I put the auxiliary lighting on there I need to lower the chronograph so I don't want to hit the dumb thing. And that's it. Got one air on the chronograph there, but otherwise we've got velocities off every one of those and those are pretty much in line with what you should get. You can see it's getting cold, you can see my breath. My phone is starting to hate me because it's so cold outside. I had to get the charger and hook this guy up. But anyways, a majority of our shots were placed center of mass. There was still quite a bit of ceramic maybe left in this area, but you can see that it's falling all over the table. You can see the gray stuff. I kind of labeled off the different marks as I could see them there. It gets hard to distinguish them if you're not checking after every single one. But what do you guys think? absolutely positively no penetration now if we had some ss 190 and you found a compromised part of the plate that steel penetrator tip could go through this we've got our plate strapped up and we're going to hit it with another 10 rounds of this stuff just because we're out here and i'm cold already so i might as well stay cold sorry for not turning on the chronograph the last 10 rounds I have them saved in a shot string so I will annotate on each shot what they were again t6b first then our black dragon fang hopefully we still get some velocities off this
I'm gonna try to just put these all in the same spot. And that's it. Pretty good velocity out of those rounds, out of our eight inch DBX though. Our last string was mainly concentrated in this area right here. There's not much of this plate left. You should be able to see a lot of the B4C on the table here. That stuff gets everywhere. And finally, rut row raggy, we have one penetration. And this is where I was likely constantly hitting this plate with those last few rounds. So we've compromised this little area enough that that all copper round was able to get through. It would probably take you a lot of five, seven rounds against somebody with hard armor, especially ceramic, to actually get a penetration. You likely should aim for the head or other extremities. Here is a teardown of the inside of our eSappy Rev E. If you guys think I should continue doing these teardowns at the end of the video, let me know and I'll gladly bring them home and continue to tear them down. But here is what's left of the ceramic. You can see that that goes all the way to the edge. There's a low density foam on the outside. Now here's the interesting part is this is actually a metallic layer of some kind. It reminds me of like a corrugated sheet metal. It's got ridges in it. I don't know if the newer ESAPIs have this, but the 5.7 that actually penetrated was this one that was pretty much right on top of each other. Here are some of the recovered either Black Dragon Fang or T6Bs that have I picked out of the plate here. Pretty interesting, they mushroomed over. So then behind that is our polyethylene layer and this is nothing new, it's just sheets of polyethylene. I don't know if because of age, this is a little more pliable, but you can see it's a, it's pretty flexible. So I don't know if they didn't press these together very well back then, or if that was just the method of pressing at the time. And then there is that single exit from the 5.7. Up here was our plus P plus M2 AP. And there's just a bunch of these layers here. You can see more of those five, seven rounds in here, all mushroomed over. Well, to all my five, seven by 28 millimeter fans, life will find a way. These are commonly called bulletproof vests, but in reality, they're bullet resistant vests given enough time and resources or enough shots on the plate. It's always a possibility that you can defeat them. It took us approximately 20 rounds of 5.7 on a eSappy plate that had been compromised by another test to finally get a penetration. I'll roll a picture in picture when I get home and can take this apart a little better. Hopefully not make too much of a mess or the wife will kill me. But you can see that there is a subsequent round right next to where this one penetrated and that probably helped that one get through. As I prepare to say sayonara, I would like to take a moment to thank all those who help make these videos possible. Number one is my Patreon supporters. Number two is SOF gear you want. That's where these eSappy plates came from. And of course, you all for watching. Until next time, everyone, I'll catch you at the range.